the list of stars that never end. You're our guest in the front row. Now it's time to start the show. Brand some webcast show. Interviews with folks you know. Come along and join the fun. In our books, you're number one. From the live entertainment capital of the world, you're listening to BransonWebcast.com with your hosts, Hamner and Barber. It's not TV or radio, just one click, download the show. Grab some coffee, take your seat, we've got friends you'd like to meet. Branson Webcast Show, Hamner Barber, here we go. Laugh along and have some fun, it's a show for of them plays with birds and the other makes a sassy chihuahua talk here's dave hamner and jim barber thank you craig burnett and welcome back to the webcast with one of my favorite people of all times of all history sarah kleinfelter <laughs> who is like the, you know everything about branson you've got your finger on the pulse of branson and the the entire nation you just, you, you do everything, Sarah. You're, I you're, read a lot. You're one of the most incredible people. I'm seriously, I just, I think you're great. Well, thank you, Jim Barber. That's <laughs> Good night, everybody. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Where do we go from here? Well, I just, uh, you know, I'm glad that you could come on. <laughs> well, we love here. you and we know you, but we want these folks out here to get to know you like we do. So okay. Okay. Let's uh, talk about, how did you come to Branson? I came to Branson in 1978, that's 30 years ago. And we mm -hmm. came to Branson because we had a small farm up in Iowa. We were, my husband and I were both teaching at Kirkwood Community College up there. Yeah. And um, the month of January, the year before we decided to move, it never got above 23 degrees below zero. Oh. And we said, there's gotta be a better place. <laughs> and Aunt Opal, who lived over in a little town called Hurley said, if you're gonna move to Missouri, you better move someplace like Branson, where everybody's a come here. Uh, because if you move out into the, the little towns out in the country, you won't be accepted. Probably. You're not accepted if you didn't graduate from high school from those small towns. And so we came to Branson, and sure enough, every there are hardly any natives in Branson at all. Everybody's kind of a transplant. We are. We are. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's how. So that's how you came. So and then, well, but but there's more. Oh, well, there's more. There's <laughs> the rest, so, we the rest of the story. <laughs> okay. We're going with the rest there's of the more story. Because I came, I was I was chairing the humanities division at Kirkwood Community College and had been for ten years up in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and decided that I wanted to get out of administration. And so, um, the only English professorship uh, happened to be at the College of the Ozarks, and so I was hired to teach English two students at the College of the Ozarks, which was somewhat of an oxymoron to, from the very <laughs> beginning, I think. And uh, the first class that they assigned me was a junior level remedial English class. Oh. And that was a major challenge at the College of the Ozarks to, to teach um, English, to teach the King's English and to people um, who live in the Ozarks. Uh -huh. and talk funny. And, but you yeah. kind of changed. Say weird well, I've things. talked to some of your students too, and they say that you were tough. You were a tough. I teacher. was tough. I yeah. was tough. I wanted them to be good. I always would have write more comments on their papers than uh, than they did. So, it took forever. Um, well, teachers really papers. can influence somebody, you know, especially the teachers who'll take the extra time to to be a little tough on somebody so that they can really learn and improve. I think that's yeah. You know, my 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 great admiration goes out to anybody who's a teacher right now, uh, especially as public school teachers yeah. who are dealing with unbelievable numbers of students and major challenges and people speaking four thousand different languages in a classroom and uh, you know all those kinds of challenges. So that 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 makes a lot of sense now. When we did a couple of those elder hostel things with you, mm -hmm. I threw a couple of zinger words out there, big words, and, and I thought then then I misused one one or two, and you started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> laughing yeah, yeah she did kind of she did kind of and then i look at her and I go oh she's the teacher <laughs> well you mentioned the What's elder house yeah right okay let's, let's talk about that that the elder house program is really a great program and you're very okay. active in it here locally tell us about what okay well let's talk about how it started because it actually started at the school of the ozarks in the early 1980s and um uh, the first program that we did was something called the Flora, Fauna, and Folklore of the Ozarks. Elder Hostel is a national and international travel program for people 55 and older, and its emphasis is the educational component. So one thing has led to another. Uh, during the Branson boom, I developed a program called Branson Showbiz and did that.
that during the time that Branson was going through its major growth spurt. And um, you know that program is alive and well today with a uh, under the auspices of a not-for-profit organization called Ozark Adventures. And Ozark Adventures then uh, is the subcontractor still with the National Elder Hostel uh, program. And um, uh, we're doing very well, probably close to 40 weeks of programming. And where you two come in is that one of those programs uh, is an intergenerational program called Branson Showbiz Kids, and it's designed for grandparents and their grandchildren. And the grandparents have to be 55 and older, the grandkids, because we want people who probably are interested in show business, uh, are ranging in age from like probably nine to 14 or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did five of those programs. And of course, the hit time of uh, the week is on Wednesday when we bring in Dave Hamner and Jim Barber and <laughs> Denise Hamner and the birds and Ubies and a few other little things like that <laughs> who come in and work with the students, uh, work with the young people. And the young people are just absolutely in awe. And the older people are in awe because they are so stunned that you two literally take time out of your busy lives to come and work with these people. They just can't get over that here are mega stars uh, in yes. Branson. Mega stars, <laughs> mega stars who are coming in and working mega, with uh, yeah, the young yeah. folks. And so it's well, we, an amazing thing. We really thing. enjoyed being part of those and, and it's a lot of fun to have them come and see our show and then get to do a little uh, q a with them and talk about our show and 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 then have them learn some things about the art of magic the art right. of ventriloquism that they didn't right. know yeah. except We're, that dave hamner never reveals any deep dark secrets he well, keeps just all one little things. one we give them one little one and we kind of instruct them but but what's interesting about this is that jim has some uh a background in education and so do i and so we, we it, it's kind of an outgrowth of who we are. We do love to instruct and to encourage young people to go in the right direction. And education is a key to them becoming the, uh, the best Without characters them, yeah. and yeah. building character in them. Yeah. So uh, it, it's a wonderful, this Elder Hostel program is a wonderful program. So we've been happy to have been part of it the last couple of years. Good, because you're on tap for six more. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that. Oh, that was a zinger. <laughs> well, folks, you heard it first here at the Branson webcast. Okay, so don't plan anything during um, you know, June, July, and July, and uh, August of next But what she year, fails to tell you is you always bring a really good group of them, and they come to our show, uh -huh. and they're, they're a fun group to entertain. And then the next day is when we go and we educate them. So it really makes for a, a fine time for both of uh -huh. us. So, uh -huh. And if you've got somebody cool. listening right now who might be interested in participating in one of your uh, adventures do you have a website where they can go to and, uh -huh. uh it's yeah. called information at or it's info at ozark adventures.com okay so and that's that your email address them. and ozark .com uh -huh. is where uh -huh. they can go okay right. great that's simple Without a doubt, yeah well that's a lot of fun and i've heard i've experienced the uh, branson showbiz lectures and I tell you, it yes, is so you much have fun because all forty hours of them, I think <laughs> it's it's a lot of time. And uh, you know, you 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 really have the what you call the Branson formula uh -huh. figured uh -huh. out, where where there's a a typical formula to to most of the successful shows in Branson. Mm -hmm. And, and let me kind of talk about that a little bit. You know, one of the great things at the college was that I was privileged to chair the Division of Performing and Professional Arts. And at the time that I was in that administrative position at the college, what was happening in my very own backyard it was the Branson boom time. And so it was 1988 through about 1998. And... Um, you know, we were doing master classes. We were hiring people from the industry, and um, you know it was just you know pretty awesome. About 1996, a young woman named Jessica Howard called me from New York University and said she wanted to do a PhD dissertation from NYU on Branson. She ended up coming, teaching part-time at the college, as well as living in my basement for two and a half years. And she actually would take the clipboard and would go to every show, record every single aspect of the show, from you know the costumes to the sequencing of the, the performance uh, numbers for instance you know how many people were in the cast you know every possible kind of uh, piece of data and what happened is again she began to make some observations that a Branson-esque show that became kind of 
one of those terms that people began to talk about throughout the country uh, had certain characteristics. And of course, the most obvious characteristics of the Branson Show formula is you know, the, the kind of overt honoring of family, faith, and flag. Mm -hmm. That you know, family is very important, patriotism is very important, mm -hmm. uh, as well as religion. You mm -hmm. know? So if, if you talk about people who wear their patriotism, religion, and family proudly, um, yeah. and nobly on their shoulders, Branson is the place mm -hmm. for that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But the Branson Show formula is much more than that because the Branson formula, even though obviously if you're a show, you're going to honor the veterans and you're going to have the patriotic number Yes. at the end. Do you all have a patriotic number We have number a at the new end? one that is going in this Christmas. Okay. Yeah, it's, so it's that's going to be pretty exciting. It's going to close the first half in Christmas, but next year it'll close the show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the theaters in Branson, of course, have the big patriotic number so that they can get standing ovations at the end mm -hmm. of the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. Something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the Branson show formula is is the old variety show formula. Uh -huh. The Branson shows are vaudeville. The Branson shows are the TV variety shows. Mm -hmm. And that's why your show is so successful because mm -hmm. you, you model that particular um, format. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and most of the people who are a little long of tooth or perhaps gray of hair <laughs> now uh, I'm are, to get to are the people that grew up on those variety shows of the 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. and 70s, and those are the same people who came to Branson, um, you know, and settled in here. And I just rewatched today that 1991 60 minute uh, oh. television spot, which is 13 minutes of of glory and what it has is you know not only does it have Mel Tillis implying that you can stay in one place and make six m m million dollars a year <laughs> how, how are you guys doing oh yeah right? we're, we're doing yeah. all oh, of okay. I remember <laughs> all of it and, and more <laughs> but Roy Clark even mentioned b -b 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 billion billion yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he yeah. talks about 1.4 billion dollars being made here but in addition to that I think it is gosh I can't remember well, I think it's Mo Bandy who says something like, you know, in that TV interview, I can finally put my socks in the drawers. Yeah. And, you know, I think people have to remember that entertainment is so much an on the road kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that in the early 90s, Branson was absolutely a salvation for most entertainers who could come to a place yeah. and the audiences could come to them rather than their having to travel forever. Mm -hmm. And go to the audience. Very, so, very few places yeah. where you can do that as an entertainer. So. All that is yeah. tied into the Branson Show formula. And yeah. it's, it's an amazing thing. It is, and you could literally talk days on it because I, could. I know you, you you have in the past. Now let's and talk about let's talk politics because you're very active okay. in the political scene here in Branson. What's what's uh, new on the horizon? What's happening in Branson right now that we can talk about? I saw that smile on your face. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I keep thinking again. You know, obviously, women rising in politics. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Isn't it? Yes, your mayor. first female uh, mayor of Branson. Yeah. Um, you know, for years and years. Sarah you know, Palin. No, no, no. That's <laughs> not Ray what Ray I had Presley. in mind. Rayanne yeah. Presley. She was a mayor, though, too. <laughs> yeah, she was a mayor of an even smaller town yeah, exactly. than Branson. So yeah. I think that's an important thing. Um, politically, I think... And I'm, I'm thinking about the county because I'm also very much involved with county politics. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you've got the out with the old, in with the new. And, and uh, the interesting thing is that Taney County, of course, is a Republican bastion. Mm -hmm. And uh, the primary election for county politics is de facto the election of the year. So, um, you know, once you make it through the primary chances are uh, you're going to you know be the the person who goes into office in January um you know again just that that wonderful sense of politics changes and it's an interesting people. time in Branson we've got the the Branson Landing the Sight and Sound Theater all now the all talking. the new construction that's going yeah. on in the area the now, new airport getting ready to open in spring of yeah if you want to talk about what all is happening in Branson I have never known a time uh, when things were as much 
in play as they are right now. Uh, I think the theater industry is a, you, certainly challenged, I think is the word to say mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that there are 53 theaters in town and close to 63,000 theater seats to be filled not once but twice at least, if not three times a day, mm -hmm. which means that the real product of Branson is 180,000 a day theater seats to to fill a day which is absolutely mind-boggling yeah. and and what you've got is a pie and the pie now uh, is claimed to be 8.4 million visitors per year but you've got a lot of slices out of that entertainment and pie. out of the 8.4 how many attend theaters well and, that's, and then you have to check that out too. yeah that's the other question because I think the 450 million dollar landing development is you know a blessing and a curse simultaneously because what it has done in my humble opinion is it has split the the market audience it split the target market um, because people who come to the landing who are probably profiled more likely and i want to use the term dinks because uh, <laughs> yeah. dinky people go to the to the land double income no kids. double income no kids is who i yes. have in mind <laughs> and they're all the she she people who like shopping at chico's and victoria's secret and all those good kind of places and they like having fine wine and they like having cigar rooms and steak houses and all those other kind of things and they like staying at the hilton boutique hotel for $250 a night. They like that. But those are not the people that have made the entertainment industry. You know, the entertainment industry was made up of people who love the Presley show mm -hmm. and the Bobolinks and the Hamner Barber show mm -hmm. and like eating at 695 sneeze guard buffets mm -hmm. and <laughs> you know and on and like staying in 2995 motel rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they still like that feeling that they can of afford value, to come here value and without a doubt you know? and and so you've got two very different kind of of audiences i think now and one is the that kind of she she gosh dare i say the jaguar driving sports car corvette mm -hmm. folks from the landing and then you've still got mom and pop and the pickup truck and you've put the iowa crops aside and Come on down. You can come to Branson. Mm -hmm. um, but marketing for that audience is particularly difficult because where do you put your marketing dollars? Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's why um, I, I think Branson is kind of in a degree of stress right now. But there certainly are new things that are happening. And you know, all, all kinds the time. of things. There's a lot yeah, of so. opportunity right now, isn't there? Because uh, when, when there's a problem, that creates an opportunity. Well, you're Mr. Chamber of Commerce now. <laughs> Well, I, so what all are they he's saying? He's a councilman. He's a councilman. Well, I'm so fresh, I don't even have anything to report yet. But uh, <laughs> I will, believe me, I will. Yeah. I'm excited to get involved uh, here with the chamber, too, because I, I, I see a lot of great growth in this town. I think it's just going through a little speed bump right now, as the whole country is, yeah. of course, with the economy. And the weather has just been unusual, to say the least. Uh, but there's a lot of fun things ahead and and you know I could have you on every week I think we could talk about something new going on in Branson but let's to, to wind this up let's go okay. back to the very first day that we met because I remember it was a very traumatic day for your husband it was awful awful hmm. you were performing at the Glen Campbell theater yes and it was my husband's, I don't even remember which of his many birthdays but it was his birthday and for some reason I got him up on stage when you do the Supremes number, and you dressed him in that awful black wig and that awful outfit, mm -hmm. along with two other gentlemen, it's horrible, <laughs> and forced him while you sang "Stop in the Name of Love" or something like that. <laughs> That's pretty close. Pretty. <laughs> pretty close. And made his mouth go up and down. He was mortified. Yes. He's a very dignified man. Really. He's mortified. And then you had the unmitigated gall to give him the DVD or video. Well, tape. They, yeah, DVDs weren't even invented. This then. was a long time ago. <laughs> no, the the yeah. videotape of the performance. Yeah. Every time we have a party, I get it out. Every time we have a party <laughs> and I get out the videotape, he leaves the house. Hmm. So he still holds the. 
a grudge. There is resentment. A grudge. He's bitter. One time we came to the show at this theater, <laughs> and you started saying, and out there in the audience is Sarah Kleinfelter, and he got up and went, came out here into the lobby because he was afraid you were going <laughs> to oh. get him up on stage again. Uh, He'll never be the uh, same. Well, Neil, oh. I'm sorry about that. And, uh, <laughs> Usually those experiences you have as children kind of, Mess you up the rest of your life. I know. This happened. I know. A, I know. It was. A, it was a traumatic situation. It's a grown wow. man. I. I'm sorry, but I love hearing that story. I like the way you tell it. <laughs> it's quite fine, and I'm very glad that you two are doing as well. Well, thank after you. what four years five, now? This is this our year? fifth, fifth year. In fifth our fifth season in together, but we've been in town in other shows uh, for going on 13, 14 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know we. Branson's home now, and mm -hmm. we, we really do uh, love you know being able to have our own theater and do our own show and keep growing it and building it every year. And, and, uh, but it's people like you that really make this town special and, uh, and, uh, and spicy at the same spicy. time. Spicy. Yeah. Spicy. That's yes. kind of fun. It's pretty to spicy, think about. I'm telling you. <laughs> pretty fun. Yes. Well, good to have you. Sarah Thank Kleinfeld, you so our special guest mm -hmm. here. Wow, mm -hmm. yes. I love, we love you, Sarah. Pretty fine. <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs> You've been listening to BransonWebcast.com with your hosts, Dave Hamner and Jim Barber. Join us next time for more interviews, music, and fun from Branson, Missouri. Y'all come back and hear us soon. Hope you liked our little tune. Next time on the internet, we'll have new friends you haven't met. Branson Webcast Show, spread the word to all you know. On the web and having fun, it's the show for everyone. This is your announcer, Craig Burnett, saying thanks for joining us and come back real soon for more fun at BransonWebcast.com.